Yes, fine, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Hi, everybody. Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DL Ignite. Uh, with me today, I have Claire Brooks. Um, Claire is um, uh, uh, dialing in from um, sunny California, though she has an accent like mine. We'll get into that in a, in a, in a bit. Uh, today, we're going to talk about um, how marketers can lead with empathy. I, I hear about it all the time. Um, you know, we're into, you know, a number of months of lockdown and and, and, and people talk, yeah, we need to leave with empathy. What does it mean? Um, and Claire's uh, very kindly come in to talk about this today. Uh, Claire, uh, before we go anywhere, where can people find you? Well, hi, everyone. Um, you can, LinkedIn's probably the best place. So Claire Brooks, president of Model People. Model People, that's the name of the company. Um, you can also get me on Twitter at Model Person. And our website is modelpeopleinc.com. And and because there's some people watching where English isn't necessarily the first letter, it's uh, sort of first language. Uh, Brooks is without an E. It is a, a B R W O K S. Yeah, I should have said that. It's Claire with an I, C L A I R E, and Brooks B R O O K S, no E at the end. Fantastic. Thanks, Tim. Now, now we've got my, my 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 spelling has never been a strong point for me, so I I, I usually do this just for me, just just but you know, uh, oh, people you. usually spell my name wrong. So uh, so Claire, um, b you know, before we get some start get started, context. So give us a, a, a bit about your background, your journey, your story. Um, tell us about why empathy is important to you. Right. Well, I started in um, brand management, so I started my career with P and G and um, progressed into B2B um, marketing and sales. So um, really needing to work with salespeople and understand their job and, you know, being at the sharp end. Uh, I was an academic for a period of time. I taught MBAs at Durham University Business School. And I came to the United States um, actually 20 years ago. <laughs> Sounds a long time. And, uh, and here I've worked in uh, strategic planning um, on the advertising side. And then I set up um, my business, Model People, 14 years ago. And um, what we do is um, strategic empathy. So um, I've learned over the years that um, you need to um, work with empathy, you need to lead with empathy. Um, but empathy is one of those sort of odd words, isn't it? You, you touched on this. So I think in some ways we might all be a bit suspicious about it. How does it help me do my job? Well, it could be the thing that you really do need to do a good job because if you do it strategically, empathy is about, um, it's, it's, a, it's a cognitive thing. It's, it's thinking about um, your customers, your consumers, what they need. But it's also having um, an emotional connection with that, understanding how they feel, what their lives are like, getting them as people. And then the strategic piece um, is about what you do about that. It's about having a plan. Now, ideally, your organization has a plan, has a strategy, but maybe you're an individual salesperson. You need a strategy for your key accounts. So um, empathy done strategically um, is essential um, to sales and marketing people. And um, I think we're going to get into that. And, uh, and, 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 and you're sure. actually, uh, um, we're both um, Kogan Page authors, aren't we? Yes, we are. Can I hold my book up or is that blatant, blatant marketing? Here we go. And um, Tim, I think you've got two books to hold up. I've only got one. Uh, okay, if you insist, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that blatant? Uh, but um, I've got uh, a Chinese uh, edition as well. Do you have a Chinese edition? Oh, yeah, there is a Chinese edition, edition as well. Oh, well, I, then I can, then, all right, I can see. <laughs> It's funny how the books always are right by me when everyone and it's like immediately it just appears from that way. Well, I mean, obviously, I, I thought I might get the chance to do this, but I do actually consult it and, and read it, which is kind of nice that uh, mm. that it's it's relevant to me, even if not anybody else. Mm. <laughs> it's the world's best business card. You walk yeah. into an, um, you go walk into an organization. Sorry, for people, for it's a bit self indulgent, but you go in there and put your book down. And they mm. go, oh right, okay. So, and it, mm. I recommend it to everybody. And I've written about, I've written blogs about how you can get and write books. So if people are interested, you can reach out and contact me. I'm happy to connect you. But anyway, it's, it's yeah, this is what you do. Yes, okay. it's hard work. Yeah, it is. Uh, so Claire, we're, we're we're recording this on the fourth of August, 2020, mm. and we're in the middle of a pan COVID nineteen pandemic. 
um, and we, you know, we thought we were opening up, and then we we're closing back down again, and then we're opening up again, and then we're closing back down again. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the world has changed in any way in terms of sales and marketing? Well, um, I think we all hoped that it was going to be one and done, you know, a couple of months. And it's becoming clearer and clearer that it's not. Um, and we just ran a, a, a big mental health study globally. Um, and um, over half of the people out there are suffering some kind of mental health impact. So people are uncertain. Um, and uncertainty is not good for sales and marketing because it stops people from making decisions. And um, some of the data I've seen indicates that maybe um, about a third of people have money to spend, but um, think there's going to be a recession, aren't going to go back to spending anytime soon. So that's a huge issue. And then I think some things have changed a lot in terms of um, how people are, are spending. I mean, the, the most obvious one that we've talked about is uh, online grocery shopping. Um, you know, and over half of us are now doing online grocery shopping, whereas, you know, that the growth curve was really slow. Um, it grew 40% this year. It's doubled in the UK. It it's has, yeah. yeah. And, and in fact, I saw a McKinsey study about the UK saying that 78% of people are not going back. They're going to carry on yes. shopping online. Yeah. Um, so that's a really big thing. If you look at health, um, over 50% of doctors are now using telemedicine. And they were quite wary about that before. And I think with some good reason, because there are problems for patients, especially mental health patients. Um, but they're doing it. And patients, you know, trial has doubled and people are, um, you know, interested in, in doing that, perhaps not all the time, but as, as part of the way that they've done things. So we've had this, if you like, break in our behavior and um, we've changed and we've tried some things that, you know, have worked and we're not going back anytime soon. I think the other thing I, I saw, again, just as I was waiting to talk to you, channels are changing. So um, I was reading about the meatless, meatless uh, uh, meat company, can't remember what it's called, meatless farm company. And, uh, you know, the traditional way that you launch a food product is you launch in Whole Foods, you launch in a restaurant, you get lots of trial, um, and then you, you start and you know, your, your brand takes off. They've gone direct to consumer. Mm. So they did the Whole Foods thing, they did the restaurant thing, and then they said, no, we can go direct to consumer now because we know that the demand is out there and people are online. So I think a lot of things are changing, and I don't think it's going back. Do you? No, I don't. I, there's some interesting research that came out through um, Hootsuite and We Are Social, through Simon Kemp, if if, if you, people want to look it up, Simon Kemp mm -hmm. on, on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And he came up with a number of things. One is that social media is no longer a destination. We're mm -hmm. actually in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's the first time now that more people are on social media than not on social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and he has actually direct uh, data um, from Global Web Index that shows now that um, – search because it's always been the way that you know i want to find out something where'd you go i go to google or bing or whatever i go to search now he's saying social is catching up yes, and part yes. Of the reason for that is that we're used to going to search going to um uh, social for example and searching for news um and now we, we we're so used to doing that over the last few months that we're now so used to doing it for buying products mm -hmm. and, and it and it's um so social is becoming the – we're now living in social, and it's the place that we're looking for all the different things that we need to. And, that's uh, uh, yeah. and Tim, just building on that with the empathy piece, there's an emotional reason why people are on social. They're lonely. Yes. Our, yeah. our mental health study told us that. So they can get that human connection through social. I've heard you say that social is like a hug. And I think that's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and socials too, because people think of social as, as digital, as in a, but it's also a place where you go to to, to find human connection. Yeah, it um, is. Yeah. I mean, we've done some research recently about content, um, and we've built like a, um, a Masio um, uh, pyramid of, of content mm. with advertising mm. at the bottom. And, and what we found was that if people put something out, a human, a human post, um like um 
you know, we've got one sales guy. He just stopped his bike one day, uh, took a, a video, a two minute video of him standing by the, um, you know, I'm on my bike, haven't been on it for two years. So, um, it just went ballistic and he got yeah. six meetings off the back of it. You get millions of views because we want to know who we're dealing with. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got, a, um, go, going back to B2B and, and sales, um, you know, I think salespeople have maybe been a little bit wary about the human contact. You know, I need to see my customer, I need to see my client. 90% of um, B2B buyers, enterprise buyers, are online now. And uh, again, I just saw it, and it was a McKinsey study again, that um, it used to be that um, in-person contact was much more important than online contact. Guess what? The importance of online contact has doubled. It's now twice as important as, uh, as in-person contact. Now, that could be a sign of the times, but I think the mix is changing. I think even B2B enterprise buyers are used to working online. They're going to be looking for it more and more. And so I think companies have really got to start thinking, um, how do I do it in this new world? If you think about employees, employ what our mental health study told us, that employers have not been helping employees work at home. They've been expecting them to do it and, and piling on them, but they haven't thought about how to support working at home. Employers are going to have to act with empathy to really understand how to support their employees. So this is um, relevant to everything that you touch. Yes, there's a there's a complete new way of having to manage people. Um, yes. You know, there's a term coming out, you know, network management stuff, which is that, you know, you, you started off with having three offices where you had a thousand people at that's each office and now you've got three thousand offices yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and you know you've got dogs in the background and and cats walk in and and, and we're kind of used to that yeah uh, but also you know, and, and and especially for women tim sorry to to interrupt there no um you know women have to oh, I, I mean guys too okay i'm not going to get sexist on you but women have really suffered working women in this pandemic because they have to keep stopping the Zoom call and going to homeschool the kids. Um, parents, single parents, it's been really tough for people. Employers need to really step up, do some research, understand with empathy what's going on and uh, put some systems in place to support people. So so we've talked a lot about empathy and there's, you know, and there's a lot of discussion about it. And I think it's become, you know, when 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 we look at this year, you know, it's going to be, you know, what was the word of the year? It's, well, is it pivot? Is it, you know, what? You know, there's all kinds of words, and one of them is empathy. I and think so. And and so, what is strategic empathy? Can you explain what that is? Well, um, I touched on it earlier. It's a mindset, and it's a process. So the mindset is about thinking, feeling, and acting strategically. So thinking what your customer or consumer needs being in touch with them emotionally. What is their life like? Can you really step into their shoes? And then having a strategy. Now, model people, it's also a process, strategic empathy process. So it's about, um, and we, there's three stages, immerse, activate, and inspire. And so immerse is really about getting in there with your consumer or your customer. And we do a lot of immersive research. It's not, you have to go beyond the data. And you have to get to behavior, observing and understanding behavior, because that's where the real ahas, that's where the real empathy comes. Activate is about um, getting together as a team, as an organization, and saying, what's the plan? What do we do about this? Um, what strategy do we need to, in how do we need to change? How do we need to reflect what we're all going through in a new strategy? And then the third part is inspire. So that's about making sure the entire organization is on board. And we do that through a, a lot through video, you know, personas are established, but how good are your personas? You know, do you, are the people behind your personas? Is there some real empathy there? Um, and so the organization needs to make sure that, that everybody in the organization can do the job, you know. Everybody's a strategist. Everybody has empathy for the consumer or the customer. We're all um, we're all doing this in the same way, um, and that's where the inspire piece comes in. So it's a mindset and it's a process. So and, you, um, I, you, and I outline the process in the book. If I'm not had to wait for oh, you. Have, <laughs> so have you got any examples? 
Yes. Um, we, um, for example, uh, did a, a project, it's quite a funny one, um, with a, uh, an apparel company, um, you know, global apparel company. They make um, work casual, casual workwear for men. And um, they were very concerned about athleisure, you know, um, are men going to do athleisure at work and how far can we take this uh, when we're thinking about a pair of chinos, for example. Um, and so we did um, a study with them. We did um, ethnographic research. We did um, discussion groups with men. We got them to pull a lot of imagery. How do you want to look? How do you not want to look? Um, and um, we discovered, guess what? That men at work, they don't want it all to hang out. So you've got to be a bit careful with athleisure at work. You've got to, uh, men, when the men's pants, men's trousers are like armour, you know, it, it shows that I'm competent. It shows that I'm kind of all, um, you know, pulled in and, uh, and ready to go. And so you've got to be a bit careful using words like stretch and um, relax and, and all of that kind of thing. So um, how, why is this important? It's interesting. Why is it important? Well, if you think about the design team, the merchandising team, I saw you were writing about visual merchandising recently, the visual merchandising pe uh, people, they all need to know what imagery to use, what language to use, what design features to build in. Um, and so that's an enterprise wide thing. And um, so we worked with uh, initially the insights people, the design people came along and we produced some guardrails for them. Here's what you do, here's what you show, here's what you don't do and what you don't show. And that all came from the, the consumers, the men, who talked very candidly about all of this and, and showed us in visuals what they wanted and what they didn't want. So um, that was really immerse, activate, we got to the strategy and the guardrails. And then Inspire, we had a whole load of visual material to show the product designers um, what to do and, and what not to do and how to merchandise it. So, um, that, that's fantastic. I, I've got a colleague who, who, who's done sim something similar, but for female apparel. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, um, and it, it's, it's so interesting to hear what people actually say because it's usually yeah. completely different from what, your thinking it is and this is where the emotional piece comes in and we used a lot of imagery in this study because people won't always say what they mean but they can show you what they mean and so um imagery drawing we often get people to draw sounds a bit hokey but you'd be surprised i've done this in b2b settings as well business people are people too and they like to to talk to draw to show you visuals you'd be surprised and is, is that, are they some of the key tools you use or, or what, what? There's yeah. a wide range, there's a wide range of tools, but the, um, I mean, depth interviews, focus groups, um, we do online um, uh, ethnographic work, we do in-person observation work. The rule of thumb though, is that um, you go beyond the data. So we've all got masses of data about what our customers and consumers do, we don't have a lot about how they feel and how they actually behave as opposed to um, how they say they behave um, or what's behind the, the data that you're seeing, your, your analytics and it's telling you what they do. So the rule of thumb is to get in there, get down and dirty, get immersive and um, let your um, emotional brain start thinking about them as real people. It's about the human experience, not the data. So what is it that sales and marketing teams can do right now to be more empathetic? Well, I think um, given that we've talked about the change, I think that we're in the process of, of understanding the change, what's really changed, what's not going back. Um, and so for me, it's about um, really questioning everything you thought you knew about your consumers and customers. Is, is it still true? And if it's changed, is it a temporary change? And I think you can only really do that by getting in there and understanding the behavior change or the mindset change and what's behind that. Is this a change that um, you know people like? Is it actually more convenient to shop for groceries online? Or do I actually want to get back in the store because I can sniff the coffee and, and squeeze the peaches or whatever? So I think that's the first thing, really questioning everything you thought you knew. Um, I think the second thing um, is just about, there's a lot of talk now about um, customer experience and consumer experience and brand experience. And we're all busy mapping that and we're all busy mapping the journey. And 
um, that's changed. And you really need to go back to basics on that. Mark, Mark Schaefer just, just published a blog today basically saying the customer journey, if you've been mapping it over the last you forget it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the journey, the journey's for sure changed. I think the experience has changed as well mm -hmm. because um, brand experience and customer experience include things like what your brand is doing for you. And, um, you know, um, this is really the third area that, um, if I can find the page in the book, you know, we talk about um, this is our brand positioning model that we use. And right in the center is what we call brand meaning. And brand meaning um, is about relevance. It's about cultural meaning. It's about emotional meaning. That's changed um, because uh, people are expecting more from brands. And I, I'll give you an example. I've been impressed with what Amazon's been putting out there at the moment. They've got this um, climate pledge, I think they're calling it. Um, so if you think about Amazon, their brand is all about getting you what you want when you want it. It's all about, you know, indulgence and um, gratification. But no, they're saying, hang on, there's a price to the planet for that. And um, we're going to address that. We're going to get big companies to sign up to our pledge to be carbon neutral by 2040. So I think the third thing is really about revisiting your brand, not in a we're all in this together, unprecedented times, all this stuff that we're just kind of a bit weary of. But really, when it comes down to it, what can your brand do for people? that um, is uh, is now meaningful for them and i think there's a real appetite for leadership from corporations from sales people to get that across to their customers uh, i think consumers are crying out for for brand leadership um, that must be readdressed yes and i think that um we're seeing we're certainly seeing buyers the other side of sales saying you know saying when they buy things um that they're asking about what the sustainability impact yeah. is of the thing that they're buying and that may be if i buy your thing how am i going to get rid of the old thing yeah um yeah. And, and taking responsibility and i think yeah um you know people of all ages part of that is um the society that we now live in with with Greta Thunberg where there's an expectation and that's being pushed on to into schools and then into parents and that and we're going why are we get all this plastic packaging um, and we're then pushing that back. Tim, I think you're right. And I think it's about the acceleration of the importance curve or the adoption curve. Mm. You know, we were all trickling along saying, yeah, 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 sustainability is important. Now we know it's important mm. um, because the world has changed and yeah. brands need to change. Good. Um, any other th um, uh, things that you think that sales and marketing should be doing? No, I think those are really the three things. Just okay. question, revisit the experience, the journey, think about your brand. I think that's going to keep people busy, Tim. <laughs> that's oh, a lot of work to do. Yeah. So we have a, a watcher, which is Rob Wilmot, who's actually a, a friend of mine. Um, and sometimes he asks questions. So I'm actually going to open up and ask Rob if he wants to ask any questions. He's yeah. never, he, he's not backward in coming forward. Um, but um, I, I just thought I'd, I'd leave it there. Um, so, Rob, if you, I know that you're watching. If you do want to ask anything, please, of, of Claire, please, please do. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, he's not coming. So, so, uh, so Claire, that, that's, been, that's been fantastic. That's great. Mm. Uh, actually, Tim, I just thought of one last thing. Mm. Um, you, you asked me about um, if that was it. Employees are the other thing. Mm. You know, nurture your employees if you're a leader. And... Um, ask them how they're doing and have empathy for them and do that in a very strategic way. Understand what challenges they've got now that, that you need to address strategically as an employer, as a team leader, whoever you are. So sorry. That I just no, no, no. I did, a, um, I did an interview with uh, Jill um, Christ, Christian, Christian um, uh, a couple of weeks ago mm. where she actually came up with a whole list of, of things um that um she actually reckons that people should do and there's a it's a she's a um um she's a fantastic um i'll send I'll you the link yeah i'll check that uh, out thank you she's, jill christensen uh, yes jill christensen yes yeah, and um uh she's actually got a whole link of things of, of what what leaders can do and it's a it's a it's well I, i'm biased but um um you know in terms of 
today and the way that things have changed it, it's i think it's important that I, I totally agree with what you say i actually use a, an example on there of a friend of mine who um came to me he works for um uh what was royal bank of scotland they rebranded themselves as NatWest, and he said you know normally i'm sitting there and i'm in the office and i can look out the down the door and go oh yes yeah, steve you know steve's taking a long time at his um, um his lunchtime you know and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that he can't do that he's sitting in his kitchen my uh, workforce is completely global, mm. so we're in touch 24 hours a day with, with somebody somewhere, and I think that's increasingly going to be the case. Mm. Companies have got to stop management by walking about. It's it's a mm. bit it's a bit old school now, isn't it? So so Rob has asked a question: mm. How does MPS fit in with the em empathy approach? Thanks, Rob. How does MPS fit in? Fit in with the empathy approach. What is MPS? Tell me. Um, it's the measurement. What's that um, measurement of customers? Hmm. Isn't it? I'm Net promoter score. Oh, net promoter. Sorry, I thought you said MPS. I'm sorry. Net promoter score. Yeah. Um, I could do a whole 10 minutes on net promoter score um, because it's basically dumbed down, isn't it? It's basically, um, you know, this minus that, and, and it's, a, it's a dashboard measure of how we're doing. And CEOs like it because they can get it. It's a second. You can, you know, see whether you're going up or down. It isn't empathy. And the only thing I can advise you to do is, that, is to make sure that you are measuring the right things. So we've worked with, for example, um, a big enterprise software company. They came to us and said, um, you know, we've got all these analytics. We don't know what goes into our NPS. Um, we need you to talk to consumers. We need you to help us understand the right measures to be using and the language um, that those measures should be in. Um, and so I think that's the relationship. Just make sure that there is empathy built into the analytics that you're um the the, the the measurements that you're that you're taking is that okay rob <laughs> thank you thanks rob he, he usually comes up with a pretty um a pretty um yeah good on rob yeah yeah and i'm sorry i misheard i thought you said mps uh, so that's apologies me. it's me apologies claire thank you so much for today it's been it's been fantastic do, do you want to show do you want to show everybody your book again and uh, explain <laughs> did you didn't i didn't i wave it enough <laughs> Marketing with Strategic Empathy, and it's got um, a lot of case studies in there, Tim, and it's also got the process and all the tools that we use. So if you are um, interested in this stuff, yeah, uh, Kogan page or Amazon.co.uk or .com, hmm. and China as well, I think. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So, and, and people can get you on LinkedIn, Claire yes. Brooks, um, C-L-A-I-R-E, B R O O K S. That's it. It's at the bottom. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, there we go. And the company's model people, M O D E L P O P L E, um, because that's what we do. We model people, who they are, and uh, and how they feel, and what they do. Fantastic. Thanks, Claire. I really appreciate you, you coming on today. Um, uh, really insightful. Um, I enjoy it. And, I mean, you know, you, you've done a you you you've done a great job of putting it together and and, and structuring it, and I really appreciate that as well. Thank um, you, Tim. It was a blast. Thank you. And thank you for, for getting, because it's, I don't know what time it is, but it's late for me, but it's kind of early for you. So it's not too bad. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. Thanks so much. And thank you, Rob, for, um, for watching as well. Thanks, Thanks Rob. Bye. All right.